I'm Basil Unforsal, which is my writing name is Uncle Buzz. Um, I'm going to go through a few things today, but one of the most important things I want to do is go to happy times in our childhood. We're at no sad times. We're going to happy times. We're going to have a bit of fun. This is my first one, so there'll probably be a few bloopers. So let's just uh, enjoy ourselves today. And um, so is everyone good to start? We're all good? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Have you got a coffee yet? No, no, Okay, that's all right. Now listen, before we start, what about we all stand up and have a bit of a stretch, guys? Just so we're getting ready, you know, just get up and have a bit of a stretch. Do the chicken dance. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Have a stretch, a and lift up your arms. Ooh, joints cracking. Touch your toes. Ah, oh, right. Okay, we're ready to start. Now we're ready to start. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> you know, there's um, there's a proverb uh, seventeen twenty two. It says a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries bones. We don't want any dry bones in here today. So I just want everyone to say, I've got a merry heart today. Yeah. I've got a merry heart, heart today. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, we can make a little bit of a start. Let's just open up our books. And just, uh, I'll just show you a little bit of what we're going to do today. Now, you might be jumping around a little bit, but the main motive today is just to give you guys some ideas how to get started. You know, whichever it may be, whether you want to write children's books. I mean, I've got a book on the table there from a father's pen, which is a little bit, that was, that was a family book that I wrote about me coming over from Italy and leading up to my son's wedding in Toscana in 2011. So there's a lot of things you can do, but this is really all about families, your own kids or kids you like, you know, it's about having some fun, it's about your own life. So we'll be going a bit all over the place, but um, if we just have a look at it, I'm just going to give you a little bit of my background, my journey to writing, how to get the creativity in you, writing prompts, making the start, all just tips it, that's fine. But listen, first of all, I'd just like to thank you all for coming because I know one of the hardest things in life to do is make a start. And I find that. So um, thank you for coming, guys. And I'm just going to give you a bit of my background. If you want to read along with me, it's in page three. Got no numbers on it. Yes, has it? Oh, you've got the numbers on yours. Oh, you did, did you take them off? <laughs> I got numbers on my wrist. That's why you copy them. My brother, my brother um, picks the spelling mistakes up. Because my English isn't so, exactly. If I missed you, Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's on page three with trees. <laughs> All right. I wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, and at times felt rejected by the people closest to me. I was never that good at school. Struggled to get concepts of maths, English, etc. No matter how hard I tried. Fast forward. All I ever wanted was to be loved and appreciated like everyone. We all, that's all we all want, I'm sure. Then in a twinkling of an eye, I found myself married with four children and then divorced. It was at this time I decided to journal and find out what made Basilio who he is today. After my divorce, were really dark times for me and I found myself with many unanswered answered questions. How was I going to be able to cope without the only woman I had ever loved in my life and of whom I felt very dependent on? The thing that kept me going was my faith in God and support for my children. I also found myself gravitating back to my siblings who were a great support. And I say to my children, get along as you always need one another. And that's so true guys. Keep the channels open with family. It's so important. You need those channels open because you need one another, especially in those tough times. 
it's family that comes up, it's family that helps out, it's family you go to. So, moving right along. So, this is how it started. I've got my brother here, Jim, and Alan's in the back. Thank you, Alan, for he's been helping me with my books and he's he's going to video this today, guys. So, Hey, if there's, if there's any problem, if there's any problems with that, uh, go and see Alan, okay? <laughs> Did you get an appearance fee? Appearance fee. <laughs> Depending on how many hits we get. <laughs> Depends on your words. Ah, tell you. This is how I started writing my first book, Faithful Horse Helen. I would have time to look after my brother's children, Jacob and Isaac. They would always ask me, and they gave me their name up the bus, tell us a story. I would proceed and tell them stories I told my children when they were growing up about a horse hero called the Adventure of Faithful Horse Helen. And they loved it. And the funny thing about those stories, I'll be quite honest with you guys, I called the horse Helen a little bit in spikes, my wife's name was Helen, we were going through a bit of a tough time at that stage. And I did it a little bit, with a little bit of spike, but... You're putting words in my mouth. No, no, no. <laughs> I was going to say, actually, she was here for <laughs> But, um, that was just a little bit of immaturity on my part. That's all that was. And, um... Little did I know that I was going to repeat those stories. Not not the spy part, just the way I made those stories up. Wasn't and I thought, so was it the racehorse? No, it wasn't a racehorse. <laughs> that's my other book. So I didn't realise you were going to hold you with David Helen So anyway, what happened was after this experience. I shared the experience with a writer friend of mine, Monique Wilson, who's um, more of a play writer, and she encouraged me to write a book. And that's how it started. From someone's suggestion, asking me to tell them stories. It doesn't take much for a seed bang. You grab that seed, you take hold of it, and you never know where it's gonna go. And then, the rest is history. I'll talk a little bit about what happened, the complications of writing, and I had a lot of help from my brother and from other people. So when you do something, you don't have to do it yourself. It's okay to get help. It's not a Lone Ranger thing. It's, you know, many people get help. A lot of people have ghostwriters, they don't even write the book, they just put their name on it. But I'm not saying to do that. But I'm just letting you know what's going on. Okay, that's a bit of my background. And in actual fact, the second book, Abraham Donkey, started the same way. What happened was, babysitting again my brother's children, and I says, Uncle Buzz, tell us a story. And I said, what, do you, what sort of story do you want? About what? And I remember Isaac saying, Abraham Donkey. And I thought, wow. Abraham, I went straight back to Sicily where I come from, in my head, because we had donkey travel. Donkeys were a really big part. When I went back in the 60s, up where we stayed, there, was, there weren't roads up there and everything had to be done by donkey. So I told him one story and then I went back a few more times. He says, Uncle Buzz, tell us another story about Abraham Donkey. I says, no, no more stories, I'm writing a book. So another example of just a seed. It's amazing what you can do with a seed. Water it, pick that, you know, and then it'll grow. Every seed grows, doesn't matter what it is, what 